uh, Ficino's um, Prisca Theologia. He said they were pretty much the same. There is, is a common source of, of uh, religious knowledge, which is they are behind every spiritual movement. And, but at the time, in the 19th century, this had been completely forgotten. And even today, not everybody accepts this, of course. After Blavatsky's and the Theosophical Society's uh, work and publication, this idea of an ancient wisdom religion has become much more accepted. Even in philosophy, we have some schools where they, they talk about this perennial philosophy, you know, where they postulate that there is indeed a common source of wisdom uh, in all the for all the cultures in the world. So the idea was accepted to some extent, although most religions still are trying to keep their exclusivism. Uh, they feel that if they accept that there was a common wisdom, then why would a person belong to one particular religion and not to the other? So in, in Buddhism, they tend to have a more open view in the sense of, well, a person is attracted to a particular religion according to his previous karma. And uh, there are some religions that are more suited to a person than the other. But in most religions, this is still a very difficult point and to accept that all religions come from a common source. However, the, the secret doctrine and other theosophical writings did produce a, a change in, in the thinking of the, the time. And there were, as I said, some schools of thoughts that, that uh, began to develop these concepts and that, that are still today um, active. So first, one of the aims we said was the esoteric philosophy to present an esoteric view of the world, the universe, human beings, the deity. The second is to present this idea of a common wisdom tradition, wisdom religion. And another aim of the secret doctrine was to present the idea that there is an occult science. You know, at the time in the 19th century, the scientists were, some of the scientists were saying that in a few decades, science was going to be able to explain everything in terms of the mechanistic view of the universe. Of course, at the time, there was nothing like relativity or quantum physics or anything like that. There was a mechanistic view of the universe. The universe is just like a big clock. And this, this machine runs smoothly, uh, automatically, mechanically. And therefore, there is no need for any religion, any god. This is just a machine. There is no need of somebody or some intelligence guiding in anything. So this approach was, um, was influencing people who were there uh, at the end of the 19th century with a, an intellectual eagerness where they, they had left the religion because religion couldn't answer the questions that, that they had. And the only answers they were finding was in science. So many of them had become atheists, just like uh, Annie Besant. Annie Besant, before joining the Theosophical Society, had become a materialistic or you know, positivist, as it is called that in, in philosophy, the idea that only what can be proved through our senses is true. And uh, this was because there was a lack of a spiritual approach that would satisfy the intellectual eagerness, the intellectual questions. So Madame Blavatsky sought to show that there is a deeper science. This deeper science is what she called the occult science. That this deeper science knows more than the modern science, that the normal science about the world. And with that, she tried to show to people at least, 
that the scientists who were pro proclaiming to know everything were not all knowing. So, as we can see in her writings, in The Secret Doctrine and in some other writings, she spends some time refuting some of the current scientific views of the time. So, for example, she said that the atom was divisible when science thought the atom was just a solid ball um, with no divisions, no motion. So Blavatsky said, no, that's, that's not what it is. The, the atom is constantly, you can divide it constantly, and it is full of energy and vitality. She even used the, the word um, new, uh, atomic energy. There is uh, an energy there that science didn't know anything about. So, with the, the secret doctrine, Lavatsky showed how it is possible to approach spirituality in a scientific way, and how it is possible to expand the boundaries of science beyond the physical realm, so that it can embrace non-physical planes of the universe. Of course, to be able to become an occult scientist, we need to tread the path of the occult path or the path of spirituality that Blavatsky was laying down in her writings and other theosophists also, which is not as easy to do as becoming a scientist. But at any rate, she tried to show that there is the possibility of a deeper science. And the secret doctrine was, I think, the first attempt in modern times to bring together science and spirituality, a field that today is growing steadily and that is attracting more and more scientists. So as we can see, the secret doctrine tried to show a different view of philosophy, of religion, and of science, and tried to uh, open the eyes of, of the, the Western world to an approach that was unknown at the time. And it did produce several changes. You know, as I, will, I, I have said, um, there is a view in certain groups of, uh, within philosophy, the, the philosophical academia, there is a view where now there is, they accept that there is a common source of knowledge or wisdom. Uh, there is an effort in bringing science and spirituality together, and there is an explosion, if we want to put it that way, of interest about the esoteric, which